Okay, wait a moment. <laughs> Right, we will start our class today. So, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome back to our online joint class. It is a collaborative program between Telkom University and University Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. So, hopefully, all of you are in a good health today. And, well, my name is Nofi, and I will be the chairperson for today's session. And joining us today, our excellent speakers, uh, Mifta D. Su Sujai, PhD from Telkom University, and then Ms. Rosia Nirawi from UMKL, as well as the organizer or committee from the university. So uh, welcome and good morning. Yes. And we would like to welcome all of you, students from Telkom University, as well as students from University Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. So welcome to this uh, sixth session, actually. So it is our sixth session of online joint class. So top, uh, for topic today, uh, we will discuss about wireless communication system. But before uh, we start the, today's presentation, let me tell you the basic rules for today's agenda. So everyone, during the speaker's presentation, kindly turn off the microphone. And for those who want to ask a question during the presentation, maybe you can drop your uh, question in the chat and we will follow up the question after uh, in the discussion session after the presentation. I think. And then participants and are encouraged to ask directly to the speakers uh, during the discussion session. And then all participants are encouraged to turn on the video during the photo group session at the end of the class. As at the end of the session, uh, all participants are requested to fill out the feedback link to improve our next program as well as uh, the requirement to earn a certificate. All right, everyone. The first speaker who will deliver the material is Ms. Roziani Rawi from UNIKL. Is it true? Ibu Rozi, are you yeah. ready? Okay. So, uh, yeah. Ms. Roziani Rawi is serving lecturer and program coordinator for Diploma of Engineering Technology in Computer and Networking, Malaysian Institute of Information Technology. And her current research interest is related to wireless network cloud computing, and network security. All right, so please welcome Ms. Rosia Nirawi from UNIKL. Please, uh, the screen is yours, Ms. Rosie. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Bu Novi Susanti. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We cannot hear your voice. You cannot hear me? Uh, yeah. We can have clear. Uh, yes. Okay. And now, okay, uh, can you hear me clearly? Yes. It's clear. Okay. So, uh, so me and Dr. Miftadi uh, will be organizing, uh, will be actually class to share uh, our knowledge um, uh, with uh, all the participants here. And and basically, um, based on our discussion, okay, mm -hmm. um, Doctor Miftadi will start our lecture. So, um, so I hope, um, I hope this session will benefit so all of uh, all the participants, inshallah. Okay, and uh, so thank you very much, Doctor Novi Susanti. So I, so I pass over to Doctor Miftadi. Thank you, uh, Dr. Uh, Novi. Um, okay, thank you very much, uh, Buros. Uh, Bunofi, uh, yeah. can, I, yeah. can I continue? Yeah. Yes, of course. Uh, with the session uh, after Buros here. Yeah. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, everybody. Uh, from UDKL, bureaus and team and students. Mm -hmm. And also thank you very much, uh, the team from Telkom University. 
Winda Bunofi and and our student here. So uh, let me introduce first of all uh, me Miftadi Sujai from Faculty of Electrical Engineering, Telkom University. Um, my background is uh, in a wireless communication, especially in a satellite communication system, uh, and also mobile uh, communication system, as well as the current developed technology uh, called wireless body area network. So that's kind of network of sensor uh, put in our body. Uh, okay, uh, we will have like uh, two, almost two hours lecture and then uh, about 15 minutes for the quiz uh, at the end of the uh, lectures. And as we progress, uh, everybody freely uh, ask uh, to ask a question. So just, uh, put your hands up uh, to ask question if uh, any, then I will directly uh, answer the question. Me and Puros here, answer the questions. So, um, okay. Bunofi, can, can then we just continue with the material? Or? Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> because normally we, in tell you normally there are some so, sort of, apa ya, a little bit ceremony oh. like, uh, okay. Like semangat pagi or something okay. like that. <laughs> Maybe you can. Okay, okay then I believe uh, all the our students and UNICEL students are ready for the for the sharing sessions. Mm -hmm. So it called sharing session because hopefully uh we can share all our knowledge uh, uh and our experience regarding the wireless communications. In every uh, class of wireless communication I teach, normally I will ask my students uh, because what happened is our student now is actually what it what it calls a digital native. Okay, you are maybe about twenty years old, uh, twenty one years old, or or even younger than that. That never experiencing the development of uh, wireless communication until uh, today. What you see today is actually uh, uh, a very advan advanced version of wireless communication. While a generation like me, I have experienced, see and experience the development of wireless communication from, we call it analog communication system into the first uh, generations of uh, mobile communication systems, second generation, third, and so on, until now, uh, fifth generations of mobile communication system. So I am seeing and experiencing a very, very uh, different world created by what we call a wireless communication system. And it is so much affecting the way uh, uh, our life being conducted, the way uh, communication being conducted, and even the way uh, we have a lecture on the, cl uh, the class like today. So it is unimaginable during my student's time, except in the Star Trek film. Uh, maybe some of you know about the Star Trek series. I think Buros maybe has experienced a little bit about the <laughs> science fiction film called Star Trek, right? that for seeing about the video conferencing. At that time, video conferencing is like a fictions, a fictions that uh, only exist in the film, in the movie. But today, everybody from every corner of the world uh, can do video conferencing like today, like here uh, in a Zoom, or even you can uh, use a simple WhatsApp program, WhatsApp application to conduct a, a video conferencing with anybody in Africa, in America, in Europa, even in Malaysia and in Indonesia. So I just want to highlight the impact of so different uh, world, so different condition of life uh, uh, contributing contributed by the wireless communication technology. We will see that kind of development of this technology from, let's say, the first version of digital 
wireless communication system up to now a fifth generation that we are experiencing every day uh, in our communication uh, activities. Okay, that's a little bit introductions. But before going deep into a specific mobile communication system, let me see what, what is wireless communication system. So a wireless communication system, basically a communication that not using a wire, a wire. A wire is like uh, when you see the old telephone, connection between the, what we call it central, or uh, uh, central means uh, switching central somewhere in the town, are connected one by one by a wire. With, uh, whether it is a, a coaxial wire or, or, or a twisted pair wire. So you see everywhere in a in a town in a uh, village, uh, there is a huge number of uh, wiring road connecting beside the road. Yeah, connecting every home, every offices to a switching central by a wire. That call a wireline communication uh, system network. Or even now, uh, there is a lot of fiber wire that connecting every home with a, uh, a central uh, communication center uh, by using a fiber optic wireline. So wireline is not dying out, but instead it's evolving from a very low capacity of uh, copper uh, wire into a fiber uh, to the home fiber optic yeah, that provide a very broadband communication capacity. But uh, well, we, I, I will not uh, arguing with uh, which one is provide a better one. But let me focus in wireless communication uh, because because it is does not require a wire to connect a huge number of user. Let's say like a mobile communication in Indonesia has more than almost three millions uh, subscriber or user. Uh, we can imagine uh, if we connect uh, every subscriber by a wire, it will be like a, a huge mass of wire yeah, covering the whole area of Indonesia. So wireless, uh, one of the beauty of wireless communication is actually we don't need uh, uh, physical media to connect uh, between one point to other point. Uh, and we can quickly uh, develop uh, the network of communication uh, because we don't need to connect with the wire. So that one reason uh, um, why wireless communication is so much developed, so much uh, distributed in, in, in every corner uh, of the world. So let's start with the Topology of wireless communication. Topology means uh, what kind of uh, connection between points or between uh, subscriber in a wireless communication world. So normally we divided the topology of wireless communications uh, by point-to-point -point communication and point-to-multipoint uh, communication. For example, this one is point-to-point -point communication. Uh, in a terrestrial uh, microwave link, for example. So point-to-point -point means uh, the communication between one transmitter. This is, for example, uh, one, uh, one uh, tower consisting of uh, transmitter and then the an antenna as the RF radio frequency N to the one receiver uh, via a link. So we call it uh, if these two antenna uh, can see each other, we call it this is a line of sight link. So a point point to point communication means one point of transmitter link to only one point of receiver, right? So this kind of uh, communication uh, has been developed for a long time, for example, to provide a terrestrial uh, microwave link 
uh, for, for example, for a TV program distributions before the era of satellite, or even if uh, uh, for some country who has not uh, satellite coverage for broadcasting, normally they develop this kind of uh, link to distribute uh, the TV broadcasting program throughout the nation. Or the other application that now you can see everywhere in the cities and in the village uh, is the connection to make what we call a backhaul link between a radio based station of mobile communication network, access network, to the switching central of that mobile communication. So they normally, uh, beside the uh, uh, fiber optic uh, link, they normally also uh, have a terrestrial microwave link as a backup, for example. So whenever there is an error in a fiber optic uh, a link, then they still have a pick up, pick up in a microwave link. And in, in certain area, maybe it is uh, rather uh, costly or economically not feasible to develop a fiber optic network uh, for a backhaul link. So people have an alternative to build instead uh, a microwave terrestrial link. So this kind of uh, topology, network topology, we call a point-to-point -point con uh, communication link. So the other uh, most common uh, communication uh, topology is what we call point-to-multipoint. Point-to-multipoint is uh, 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 one transmitter can transmit uh, two different points of receiver. For example, like in a cellular network, okay, this radio base station receive and transmit uh, from this antenna to several a number of subscriber in a, in their coverage to several point. So this is what we call a uh, point to multi point communications. If it is full duplex, mean that this communication is two ways, up and down, uplink and downlink. Other example is like uh, TV broadcasting. So this is a single way, uh, uh, simplex communication that using a one point of antenna to broadcast the whole program to so many different TV receivers, uh, so many points uh, uh, in order to receive the TV program for, for uh, from the TV stations. That's also called uh, point to multi point uh, communication topology. Okay. And the other characterization of wireless communication is normally we talk about uh, a mobility characteristic of uh, wireless communication. Why this is important? Because it will define the architecture of, uh, architecture of, of a communication network and also uh, this kind uh, uh, of communication also will um, determining what kind of uh, services that can be offered to the subscriber. So first of all, we talk about the fixed wireless network. Fixed wireless network means that the user are fixed in a certain area or in a, in, in a certain locations uh, and communicate with the service provider through a link, whether it is point-to-point -point or point-to-multi-point -point link. The fixed wireless network doesn't have a mobility features. In some point, maybe like, a, for example, Wi-Fi, it is uh, dependable with it, whether it is mobile or fixed. Uh, in the definitions, mobile uh, wireless, has a feature to cater a mobility, a full uh, mobility of a user. Full mobility means that the if the user move from one area to the other area, the user can still have a connection to the network by mechanism uh, of a handover mechanism. While in a fixed wireless network, like for example, a Wi-Fi network, uh, in a in a normal Wi-Fi, we cannot move from one way Wi-Fi to another Wi-Fi uh, with a 
uh, feature of uh, of an of a handover. Handover means when we make uh, when we are making a call, and we move. For example, we move by walking or by a car to different coverage cell coverage. Then the call uh, no need to be discontinued, disconnected. Why? Because the call will be transferred to the next uh, available area and then covered by the next base station in order to keep the connection going on. Right? Uh, while the fixed wireless sometimes uh, can also uh, provide a, a limited mobility uh, to the user, like uh, the use of uh, Wi-Fi, like when we connect to Wi-Fi by using a handphone, uh, then uh, we can moving around around that area around the coverage of uh, Wi-Fi, for example, in a radius of a hundred meter or two hundred meter. But when we move out from the original coverage and then to the next Wi-Fi coverage uh, 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 in different area, then our connection, uh, we have to make a reconnection to that uh, next Wi-Fi. So uh, when we make a connection, a call, for example, uh, the call cannot be transferred into the next uh, coverage area. That's what we call a limited mobility. This kind uh, of network are normally categorized as a fixed wireless. Why? Because they, they don't support a handover uh, mechanism. Okay. So in a mobile wireless, normally we have a uh, access network. Access network uh, is a network of, of a, a radio base station normally that provide the access to the user to the mobile phone, to the laptop, to the other kind of uh, gadget, yeah, in order to access the network. Then uh, the access network will be connected into, a, we call it here, a, a core network. A core network basically manage all the things uh, happening in the mobile communication system, including the connection, the billing, the... Uh, um, uh, 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 including management of the security, if there is a security threat, uh, and also managing the recording of the uh, communications. Uh, and the core network also have uh, normally have a big, uh, feature of a gateway, a gateway that connect with the outer network, like the internet cloud, the other operator network, and so on. So this is a very bas uh, basic uh, architecture of fixed wireless and mobile wireless and the difference between uh, both uh, wireless network. Okay. So after we defining uh, the difference between fixed and mobile, let me see from uh, the global perspective uh, of a wireless communication world. This picture may be a little bit summarizing. Almost all of the wireless communication network being used nowadays in, in the world. From the satellite communication that connecting the armada of a ship, yeah, uh, that roaming the ocean, that communicating with the train, including the high-speed train, connecting the um, mobile communication with the uh, VSAT and the other things, uh, and also a mobile communication uh, that providing services to mobile phone and providing uh, full mobility features that we can now use everywhere almost uh, while we are on the move in the car, for example, in the train, and maybe in the future, we also can use a mobile phone uh, when we fly by the plane, for example. Okay. And uh, other, other uh, communication like uh, fixed wireless, uh, like we have discussed, 
for example, like the fixed uh, internet access, wireless internet access uh, that being provided by some operator by using a, a wireless uh, access instead of fiber optic network, for example, uh, that also uh, including in this wireless communication world. The other area, the other area is some system that call a uh, nomadic wireless access. The wireless access that can roaming around uh, and switching from one uh, network and the other network. And we may call this kind of network an ad hoc network uh, that developed by, for example, a certain company to provide the internal uh, communication, like, uh, for example, to provide a wireless LAN to be used in a internal of a company, for example, or an office or a government uh, agency, for example, that uh, uh, it is a kind of closed network, not cannot be used by the uh, outsiders yeah, to access the network. So um, this uh, represent almost uh, all kind of uh, wireless communications. By land, by by land, by the sea, by the outer space, and by the air as well. But now by the air, I think uh, the next frontier: how to provide uh, wireless communication or mobile communication to to be to serve the people who are on the plane. Now a little bit going deep into uh, satellite communication system. You see that uh, nowadays. Satellite communication has been used for so many different applications. The latest one is uh, for last several years, Elon Musk has developed a Starlink that uh, he has a very ambitious to cover the whole world uh, wirelessly connected into his satellite by using a Leo satellite called, called Starlink. And this is like uh, become a big issue in the world. First of all, uh, because Elon Musk envision that this kind of network, satellite network, must be able to provide a direct link from every user, every handphone in the world directly connected in, uh, to the Elon Musk satellite. No need to uh, go into the national gateway. This also, the, his vision also endanger or, or put some uh, dangerous message into the government authority because normally uh, communication or telecommunication is heavily regulated by the country. And the country by default has a uh, jurisdiction, has an authority to regulate their domestic uh, telecommunication industry. So you can imagine. If, for example, Indonesia or Malaysia open their sky for uh, Elon Musk satellite to provide directly uh, internet access and and internet uh, and phone telephony to uh, uh, to the su subscriber, so we don't need to use our own uh, national operator, yeah, like Indonesia, like maybe Telkomsel and so on, to communicate to communicate not only to the domestic. Uh, uh, college or to domestic people, but we can uh, easily can communicate to every corner of the world with a simple communication link by using a satellite, Elon Musk satellite. Okay, uh, but I think so many countries are very very protective to their authority and their industry as well uh, by try to limiting the Elon Musk intrusions. Uh, 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 through uh, uh, satellite link, so to, through the Starlink, and also try to uh, even not allowing uh, Starlink to provide service into a uh, domestic market. Okay, that's uh, just to highlight uh, how important a satellite communication system nowadays uh, in the world. So, okay. How the satellite communication work? First of all, uh, if we see here, there is a, a planet Earth. 
Then a satellite, uh, we can put it the satellite to cover uh, some area of the Earth uh, into, we call it an orbit. An orbit is actually like a circle for the path of satellite to move around the Earth and then uh, providing the link along the area that has been covered by the satellite. So you see that circular dash line is what we call it orbit, the orbit of a satellite. And this is the satellite. The satellite can uh, act as, an, as a relay for a communication. So like, for example, if we have a ground station communicating uh, to their user around their coverage area. So instead of broadcasting through the terrestrial uh, antenna, because it is only have a, cover, uh, a range of maximum 60 kilometer, instead they can uh, upload the communication into a satellite and then satellite can relay that signal through a very, uh, through a wider area of that coverage. So it is very efficient by using a satellite in order to cover the larger area of communication compared with the terrestrial network. That's why the uh, satellite communication are very interesting in that point of view. So, okay. And satellite can uh, use several band, uh, spectrum frequency. I mean, uh, we call it a band here, band of frequency. So band of frequency or a spectrum frequency uh, for the satellite communication has been defined by the uh, International Telecommunication Organization. We call it ITU. Uh, and it is actually a, a agreement for almost 202 countries uh, in order to manage the sharing use of spectrum frequency for satellite communication. So in communica satellite communication, we cannot we cannot just use any kind of frequency, but we have to use a frequency that has been allocated for satellite communication. And it is also heavily regulated by the regulator, like Cominfo in Indonesia. Okay. Next, where do satellite operate? So this is the kind of trajectory of a satellite or the orbit. And there are several definitions of the orbit. First of all, uh, we call it a LEO, low at orbit, to put the satellite uh, to rotate around, uh, around their, uh, uh, around the world, yeah. From the head of 400 kilometer up to 2000 kilometer. So there is uh, some definition, some international definition of uh, the head of uh, satellite communication or the head of orbit. Yeah. First of all, uh, LEO from 400 to 2,000 kilometer. For example, some satellite of Elon Musk Starlink yeah, are in the orbit of around 2,000 kilometer. So it is in a LEO orbit. Uh, even at the International Space Station, that uh, some some people live there to do some research and uh, have uh, to uh, conduct some research in the International Space Station, also uh, being uh, rotated around the world in the LEO orbit on the altitude of around 400 kilometers, okay? And a second definition of orbit is called MEO, uh, medium at orbit, that satellite have an altitude of uh, around 8,000 kilometer up to 20,000 kilometer. Okay. And the last one is geo. Um, Geosynchronous orbit. Uh, that is the orbit uh, above the equatorial equator yeah, that has the altitude of 35, 1786 kilometer above the equator. And this uh, geo orbit is very interesting because they provide a fixed coverage uh, uh, to the surface of the Earth. And it is very ideal uh, to put the satellite in, in that uh, orbit because 
it is fixed uh, if we see from the earth and can provide a fixed coverage uh, throughout the year. Okay, while the other uh, orbit Leo and Mio cannot provide a 24 hours orbit. Why? Because the satellite uh, that being put in a geo orbit will rotate the Earth the same as the Earth rotation uh, around uh, its uh, axis. Okay, so if the Earth uh, rotate around its axis uh, around 24 the, uh, hours in a day, so so do the satellite in geosynchronous also rotate the same velocity, the same pace with the Earth rotate uh, around its axis. So basically, if we see from the surface of the Earth, uh, we can see like a fixed object in the sky that can uh, cover, uh, can provide a coverage of wireless communication around the Earth in a fixed way. So it is very uh, easy to uh, uh, make a coverage planning by using a geosynchronous. The other orbit is like Molnia uh, has been developed by Russian or countries in uh, that region that far away from the equator. Okay. Um, okay. And this is the type of orbit that being used uh, for satellite communications. And this just one highlight, uh, one highlight of geostationary satellite orbit that every every spot here representing a single satellite. The green one is actually the uh, operating satellite and the red one is the dying satellite or dead satellite. So you can see uh, the arc orbit of uh, geostationary satellite are fully occupied by satellite from every country except here above the Pacific uh, Ocean, that uh, there are no, no satellite because the satellite here cover the vast uh, area of uh, Pacific Ocean, which is less populated con uh, compared with other part of the world. So that's why here there are uh, no satellite covering that area. Yeah. While the other uh, part of the world are heavily, uh, very densely populated by the satellite to provide the communication uh, surfaces uh, to the area uh, in the surface of the Earth. Okay. So, what is the number of satellite being uh, sent to the uh, outer space? This is the number in a up to 2016, I don't have a current number. Uh, this is the number for uh, from the last seven years. In total, there are uh, uh, around 40,000 satellites has been sent into the outer space up to 2016. Yeah. Uh, and around 20... Around twenty five, uh, around twenty four thousands are a dead satellite. The red one is a dead satellite. Yeah, dead satellite, and the green one are a operating satellite. So now you can see that the dead satellite are occupying orbit in a huge number. And if you maybe has read about the astrophysics and so on. That kind of satellite called a debris, debris of satellite uh, in outer space, actually a very dangerous object because they move in a very uh, high speed yeah, in the outer space. And if they hit the operating satellite, then it can blow up the operating satellite. Yeah. Blow up the operating satellite and we can lose uh, that operating satellite that cost maybe some operator uh, cost some operator maybe in a region of uh, three uh, 300 uh, a million US dollar yeah. or kalau dalam rupiah uh, around berapa ya around 5 trillion rupiah yeah. so it is uh, the condition in outer space regarding with the 
satellite debris and it is a, a growing problem here. Yeah. Growing problem uh, that affecting the whole, uh, the global society of satellite communications. Okay, so now what kind of usage of satellite communications and the global impact? Um, well, you can have a look at yeah, a lot of, maybe you ex experience uh, in a daily life, the use of satellite, satellite network to provide like uh, radio uh, communication when you drive a car, then you like in Indonesia, for example, Alcinta radio stations, uh, Prambors, Delta FM and so on. Uh, actually a, a radio satellite yeah so they broadcast from Jakarta and then delivered by the satellite broadcasting uh, uh, the uh, uh, to the whole area of Indonesia I think uh, in Malaysia maybe also there are some uh, satellite radio station that um, transmitting the radio signal through a satellite hence uh, they can uh, uh, broadcast that radio FM uh, program throughout the nation very easily. Instead of if you use the terrestrial antenna, normally they are, you can only uh, cover a uh, very few tens kilometer uh, away from your uh, station radio station uh, tower. So, and also there are a huge number of corporate network like VSAT in a banking system yeah maritime communication for uh, for navigations and communication uh meteorology meteorology to predict the weather for uh distant learning like we provide a distant learning to remote uh, island of indonesia remote area of indonesia by using a satellite transponder for example and also satellite can be used for telemedicine. This is a hot issue, especially in a country like Indonesia that we have a lot of islands scattered around Nusantara, right? And people are living sometime in a small remote island that only maybe a few hundred people if you live there. So a doctor uh, struggle to get to the remote islands and it is also very costly if we have to uh, 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 just going around that Rimos Island, a doctor providing the health services. So telemedicine uh, by satellite can help the doctor and the paramedics to uh, provide uh, health services to the remote society in uh, scattered islands. That's uh, one kind of uh, use of satellite network. Uh, for aviation, flight navigation, national security, even for uh, internet access and satellite news gathering. So with that kind of usage, you can imagine uh, how big is the impact of satellite communication to the daily life of, uh, uh, of the people of the world from education, metrology, transportation, entertainment, uh, well, flight, maritime applications, uh, telemedicine, and so on. So we can imagine uh, it is contribute uh, for the welfare of uh, people of the world yeah, in a very good way, in a very wide way, because satellite can provide a wide coverage uh, of the planet Earth. Okay, and now we talk about the numbers. Actually, how much is the economic output of a satellite industry worldwide? So this is some figure, uh, I put two figure here, uh, that the output economy of a global space industry, space industry means not only the satellite itself, uh, manufacturing the satellite, but also the service industry uh, related to the satellite network, 
uh, to the rocket industry that providing the launch of the satellite and also including the the ground stations, the VSAT ground station and other uh, user equipment that uh, has been sold throughout uh, worldwide uh, in order to um, in order to, uh, for the uh, satellite communication use. Now the number is around three hundred and thirty-five US dollar, billion US dollar, in two thousand and fifteen. So billion US dollar means kalau di Indonesia itu lima kali lima belas ribuan, berarti sekitar empat ribu lima ratus triliun. Itu tahun dua ribu lima belas. And grow uh, about eight percent every year. Now in the July 2023, uh, the commercial growth climbed nearly 8% reaching to 470, uh, 427 billion US dollar. That the total value of space industry, satellite industry, right? Including in Indonesia by several operators like Telkom, uh, Indosat, uh, uh, um, Lintas Arta, uh, PSN, and so on. There are some several uh, satellite operator here. Uh, or in Malaysia, like uh, Measat, uh, Measat, then I don't know the other, well, Measat and other satellite operator in Malaysia. So this kind of figure, uh, how big is the satellite industry worldwide? Is there any question up to now? Student, do you have a question? Or if not, maybe we can continue, Dr. Nisadi. Okay. okay. Uh, just a minute. Oh, there is some. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's move uh, to telemedicine network. That's a second highlight of telemedicine network that use a wireless communications. So what is telemedicine network? Telemedicine network basically providing uh, health services like, um, well, blood testing, blood glucose meter, body fat exercise, even the consultations with the doctor, with the specialist, for example, uh, through a remote network, through uh, a remote places, yeah, by using a telemedicine network. What kind of network being used for telemedicine? Uh, there are uh, many, like by using a local area network, if it is a private network, or using a internet connection through Wi-Fi network, well, or we call it a, a cloud, yeah, internet cloud, for example, from sometime of very long distance through a near field communication or, or Bluetooth, for example, by laptop or by using a mobile uh, communication. And what not uh, being pictured here is by using a satellite network like uh, countries like Indonesia, yeah, that firstly use a uh, satellite communication to uh, provide uh, so many kind of service, including telemedicine network. So basically what a patient in a far away uh, can be, uh, can have a consultation with the doctor or the nurse uh, or the uh, specialist through this kind of devices. And then uh, a doctor can just sit in the comfort of their home or in the hospital far away uh, by facing a laptop. Like maybe if you, uh, some uh, health tech uh, application like Hello Doc, for example, in Indonesia or Hello Doctor provide a remote uh, consultation yeah, with the specialist, with the doctor, or even with the psychologist or psychiatrist. Yeah. Okay. And in the scenario, if like in a, some uh, village, remote village of Indonesia, normally uh, what available in the remote village 
is a midwife, bidan, or a nurse, not a doctor, nurse, that's serving a community in that remote village. What the mechanism of telemedicine, because some remote village, normally the society are not not well informed, not well educated, and maybe cannot use this kind of uh, services, then the nurse or the midwife can act as the as the representative of, of a doctor. So nurse, by concern of the doctor, can provide a consultation or even a, a, some degree of treatment, providing a medicine to the patient by using a remote network to cons cons to consultate uh, with the doctor or specialist, right? Then uh, do what the doctor or specialist uh, told uh, to uh, do some treatment, for example, to the patients. Okay. And this kind of telemedicine has, are not necessarily uh, interesting for the developing countries, but also very popular in uh, developed countries, especially uh, uh, countries like Canada or Australia, that uh, the land mass is very huge, the population are scattered, and the number of population are actually not, not big yet, but scattered throughout the large area of, of land mass. So that's why uh, instead of pushing the doctor to go to the remote uh, area, uh, they can use this technology to provide uh, medical services. Okay. And the um, ongoing research uh, uh, that I think uh, in concurrent with the telemedicine is what we call wireless body area network. This uh, technology are actually rather, are rather new, being intensively researched from 2010. So it's basically like just 13 years ago being intensively intensively researched yeah for what normally uh, in a normally for health monitoring system why because uh, uh, if the patient have so many as uh, or have a complicated disease they normally has to be monitored like a blood pressure uh, the uh, a bit of the uh, the or the condition of the heart, for example, then uh, the uh, oxygen saturations, condition of their um, a brain, for example, if they have a brain disease like Alzheimer or or Parkinson syndrome, for example, and so on. So this kind of patients will be up and down or go and forth. Uh, to the lab laboratory or medical laboratory just to control, to monitor their uh, health con condition. So you can imagine, for example, in an aging society like Japan, Germany, and other uh, developed countries that have a huge number of aging population, yeah, uh, then this aging population, like we call it Manula in Indonesia, spend a lot of time to go back and forth uh, to the medical laboratory just to check their health condition. And a lot of time, a lot of money has been spent just to monitor the health condition. So these technologies actually provide an alternative, a cost-effective alternative uh, instead of spending time and money to go to a uh, lab just to check the simple um, uh, health condition. So instead, we can put a wireless sensor in every node of the body, of our body, and then communicate with the transponder, with the communication modules to the gadget or to the outer uh, uh, cloud or internet cloud in order uh, for our health to be monitored in a daily basis. So like you can see here, the yellow one is the sensor that being put uh, on top of the skin and sometimes also can be put uh, inside the body to monitor our uh, uh, body conditions or health conditions. 
And this kind of sensor extracting a daily basis data or even a hourly basis or minutely basis data from our body and then uh, transmit it through a communication module to, for example, our handphone, right? Or our laptop through uh, a connection by using, for example, Bluetooth, for example. So we put uh, not only sensor, but uh, a Bluetooth module here in order that uh, data measured by the sensor can be transmitted by Bluetooth to our handphone, for example. And then our uh, handphone can collect a big data from our health condition in uh, hourly basis or the minutely basis or daily basis. And then being uh, uh, managed in a database, then sent to the hospital or to the health center in order to be analyzed uh, uh, by the doctor or by the specialist. And then the doctor can provide uh, uh, assessment or a decision to do something or to uh, give a medical treatment to the patients. So this kind of thing actually will reduce the burden of patient to go to the hospital just to check uh, or to conduct the laboratory test. Uh, and then the, the patient will lose their time, their opportunity to work or, or in terms of economy. Uh, so this uh, loss of opportunity, loss of time actually uh, will affect to the product productivity of the nation. So that's why this technology is actually try to help uh, to reduce the health burden, health burden by the government in order to provide health services to the community. And it is uh, especially very popular, this technology, in a country that now facing a very large number of manula, of, uh, of the people that has an uh, age of above 65. Like, like Japan, around 21% of the population are uh, 65, more than 65 years old. Okay, you can imagine about 21%. Germany are almost 20%. So the issue of uh, aging population, not only generating uh, a problem of healthcare and also the problem of uh population shrinking also creating the uh and actually creating the opportunity to uh a wireless communication to contribute yeah providing the solution okay and this is the telehealth market forecast in 2027 around 285 7 billion worldwide now uh, after uh, talking about the satellite communication, telemedicine, now we are. I will focus on mobile communication. That I think uh, we all are a user of mobile communication system. So basically, the mobile cellular communication system, uh, the network consists of we call it E node B or this kind of radio access network. And this is the user equipment, our handphone or our laptop that are connected into a cellular network. And this one, the, the blue one is what we call a core network. Okay, core network. So first of all, I would like to highlight the global impact of mobile communication industry in terms of economic value and employment. Um, this is the figure in 2022, last year, that mobile communication industry has the size about 5% or 5.2 trillion US dollar or 5% of the world gross domestic bruto. Jadi seluruh uh, penghasilan dunia, sedunia, 5%-nya berasal dari mobile communication industry. Okay. And it's uh, will going up to about six trillion US dollar in 2030, and worldwide it create about 60 million direct job. Direct job means the employment directly employed by the 
uh, operator of mobile or the manufacturer of mobile uh, communication industry and about 12 million job is uh, is uh, indirectly supported by this industry so it is a very very big uh, market big industry that dominating uh, around uh, the world yeah. okay now as we uh, uh, as i mentioned before as i for mentioned before uh, mobile communication has been evolved from the very basic analog communication into the 5g like right now so let we see about the evolution of mobile communication standard so used to be this is around uh, year of 1990s 1990s up to the uh, first decade of 2000 uh, 2010 i think it's um, there are still some um, a stream of uh, standardization so first of all uh, the standardization that initiated by european countries it's called the etc european telecommunication standard institute yeah based technology like gsm gbrs h 3G by using SD, uh, HSDBN, so on, up to LTE, 4G, that now I think mostly dominated the the um, the uh, coverage of, of mobile communications. And the second is NC, American National Standard Institute Technology. That's the American one like uh, IMBS for the analog, then IS95, and up to uh, uh, CDMA 2000. And it is discontinued. Why? Because American standard cannot compete with the European standard in the mobile communication. Then uh, eventually the American standard actually merged, adopted the Etsy standard. And the other uh, standardization like IEEE, this is the uh, independent standardization body because IEEE is a professional organization that has been defined a standard, for example, like a Wi-Fi network, WiMAX and so on, with a huge impact, especially Wi-Fi. Even uh, it is done by a professional organizations, not uh, by the country. But like a Wi-Fi network that we can see today, are actually uh, maybe the only one that serve the whole world for the internet access. That widely uh, available uh, almost in every part of the world. Well, other technology like WiMAX as the as the competitor used to be competitor of Wi-Fi, uh, now actually has been dying out. Yeah. Because Wi-Fi are using a unlicensed spectrum frequency, that means it's a free frequency, and then it's very cost-effective to provide a coverage. Okay, and this is uh, the evolution of mobile communication from first generation, which is analog, analog one, not yet digital to the second generation, which is digital, that means not only providing the voice, but also can provide the text, yeah, like SMS, then eventually uh, uh, provide a streaming uh, streaming uh, services, yeah, like GPRS and so on. Then move to three, third generation that provide a much higher, much higher uh, capacity and speed, that also pushing or uh, yeah pushing the bird of smartphone. So in second generation we don't experience we don't have a smartphone. That's a uh, circa uh, middle of nineties yeah. So middle of nineties we just have a simple headphone that only can be used for voice communication and SMS texting. So we just use texting by SMS and and phone very basic uh, uh, tool, very basic uh, services. Then in third generation, people can now access the email, internet with a very limited speed. And also uh, there is emerge uh, uh, 
smartphone in a very uh, simple form at that moment around 2001. But then this kind of third generation evolved into a fourth generation that provide a much, much higher speed and capacity that eventually can provide not only handphone, laptop, uh, tablet, and so on that can have a speed uh, 10 times higher or more than 10 times higher than 3G. So now you see that the application developer can develop a much sophisticated applications, yeah, like you see in uh, your smartphone. And even we can do uh, many things like video conferencing, uh, e-commerce, marketing through um, social media, for example, and even a banking system by mobile communication or e-wallet and so on are actually feasible by uh, uh, 4G technology because they can support uh, much higher capacity of uh, uh, of uh, digital services and then uh, then from that point uh, from that kind of uh, support uh, then emerge a lot of application like we see today so you can basically can share a video can share a photo through TikTok Instagram because the network can provide a high capacity that can support such advanced applications, okay? And also uh, 4G has also provided a, provide a platform that have a very uh, good uh, security that, uh, that make the uh, banking services, for example, because Banking services, mobile banking, for example, uh, require a very tight security. So security issue become a major or the main uh, issue in a banking services. Once the network cannot guarantee a very secure link, then the banking would not uh, enter that kind of services. So if you see your smartphone you can you can use a mobile banking from almost every bank that show that uh, this banking industry uh, have a very confident uh, have a very high uh, confidence to the security of uh, mobile communication so that's why uh, because of that kind of feature technology of technology that can be provided by uh, 4G then it open up uh, the whole range of applications like e-commerce, banking, economic transactions, social media, um, high quality entertainment, and so many applications that, well, uh, maybe it will develop further into a huge number of applications. But again, People are always hungry uh, of a better, better things, right? Like when we uh, conduct a video conferencing, it used to be a show of very, uh, very bad quality actually of video, of motions, right? compared with the kind of video uh, technology, video conferencing technology right now. But then people are developing, develop a more advanced technology in order to cater the need of uh, better quality. That's why from 4G then get into a 5G, which has a very much higher uh, capacity compared to the 4G and very, uh, uh, very much better security and so on. Then uh, the kind of services uh, that provide by 4G mobile communication evolve into uh, we call it a cluster of services in 5G. Like what? Like smart city. Then like uh, e-health, connected house, smart grid, smart car. So 5G basically not only cater for the human to human communications, but also to human to machine and machine to uh, machine communication. For example, by using the IoT Internet of Things, you can connect your uh, refrigerator, for example, or CCTV to your handphone, 
in order to be controlled yeah, from your handphone. You can also connect the whole houses, including the keys, the door, door lock, to lock the keys remotely, for example, and also to monitor the light, to uh, uh, make an on off of the light, to control your pets, your car, well, almost everything by using the Internet of Things through a uh, combination with a 5G, fifth generation of mobile communication. And also we can uh, then see the uh, surface like a video with the quality of 4K, even 8K through a handphone by using a 5G uh, uh, quality. Then people also start talking about the holographic communication, communication that produces a hologram like a, like a, um, uh, a science fiction in uh, Obi Wan Kenobi. What is the kind of film that showing when we connected? Then in front of us there is a holographic figure yeah, of people of a building. Um, Star Star Wars, yeah, Star Wars film, for example, yeah, that using a uh, holographic communications uh, from one galaxy to galaxy. So I think five G will uh, will be a platform for the next generation of six G that provide not only a virtual reality, augmented reality, but also eventually can provide a holographic communication also. Okay. So in 5G, uh, uh, communication not only by people to people, but also uh, by things, yeah. things to things, things to people, and vice versa. OK. Any questions? Now, then we can continue. Uh, this is a detail, a little bit detail about the Etsy base standard uh, JSM uh, evolution from 2G to 3G. So basically, as I highlight here, they are incorporating some advanced technology at the, at the time in order to uh, increase the capacity. Well, well, basically, the issue here is how, with so many state-of-the-art technology, the capacity can be increased as high as possible. So because with that capacity, a lot of new application can be developed, a lot of kind of services can be offered to the customer, and also uh, in terms of uh, uh, revenue uh, from the company point of view, uh, uh, providing a better uh, revenue schemes uh, for the company, for the, uh, uh, for the operator. Okay, okay. This is the Etsy based standard evolution, evolutions, yeah, up to 3.5G. But I think here we, we have so up to 5G, so we can skip here. This is the NC uh, evolution, uh, American one, American standard that actually has been uh, discontinued. So, American now are, uh, adopting the 5G, 4G, and 5G standard from Etsy. And this is the path migration of wireless technology. Okay. Now, if we uh, put a little bit uh, light on the internet surface uh, or broadband or broadband surface, if we talk uh, about broadband uh, wireless surfaces, uh, normally uh, they provide, I call it a limited mobility. Limited mobility means that we have a kind of mobi uh, uh, mobility while we are using a connection. We are using a device in a coverage of this broadband wireless uh, access. But somehow, uh, if we move from one coverage to other coverage, they don't support a handover mechanism. So, when we move from one uh, cell through the border to another cell, then uh, we will discontinue, disconnect that yeah, from the connections or the, our communication will be discontinued. That's why uh, we call it a limited mobility, not a full mobility. 
So in that in that kind of uh, wireless uh, a broadband uh, technology like uh, hyperpan, yeah, high speed wireless personal area network or hyperlan, yeah, uh, like Wi-Fi, hyperlan, high speed uh, wireless local area network for the internet access like. Uh, Wi-Fi technology here. Uh, normally the radius are up to a hundred meters yeah, from the access point. Then uh, there is services uh, by using a WiMAX standard that evolved here from from used to be like a contender for uh, for Wi-Fi, then become a uh, uh, broadband. Uh, broadband technology uh, for a hyperman uh, high speed wireless metropolitan area network provide a, a metropolitan network by uh, using a WiMAX technology that provide a range of coverage up to 50 kilometers okay and then there is a other technology and in a vertical way we will see a capacity of that technology capacity of the technology that uh, every standard here can can uh, deliver uh, in the implementations uh, like uh, hyperpan is up to 1 gigabit per second wi-fi is up to 100 megabit per second then uh, WiMAX are less than that. Then uh, 4G obviously less than that. But I think 5G will provide a much higher capacity than uh, 4G here. Okay, this is the uh, another evolution of uh, some standard of wireless. I will uh, skip that part. And then uh, we will mostly uh, reviewing the um, evolution of uh, GSM-based communication. This is like just a historical one. GSM are, are developed by European HT and starting service in, in Europe uh, in the year of uh, 1990. That's called uh, 90, uh, phase one. But I think, uh, Starting provided service uh, widely in Europe uh, around 1992. So that's around 30, 30 years ago. So the age of GSM is about 30 years ago. Before that, uh, all European countries are covered by the analog with uh, so many national standards in each country. Okay. Then in a 30 years, like maybe we can have a look in the in this chart. Uh, the JSM from starting from uh, European on the countries, then in less than 15 years, adopted by almost um, whole country, in, including America that have uh, their own standard, but also there are some operator based on GSM, including Indonesia. Yeah, and this figure is actually uh, the old figure, but now the number of GSM operators is up to about five billion user uh, worldwide. Okay, in the of uh, network, so there are two two evolution in in. Uh, in the network, we call it uh, evolution in radio access network here. In here. There are some typo. It should be uh, access network here. And here is the core network. So the evolution is co consists of, uh, first of all, the we call it a circuit switch core network, circuit switch center, that basically um, a very much uh, like the old technology. Then from circuit switch uh, evolved into a soft switch then by a computer. And now uh, actually has been done by the IP protocol switch, IP switch. Yeah. 
So we call it a core network because it is the the part of the network that manage everything uh, uh, of the operational of mobile communication from the uh, make the connection between users, uh, doing the charging and billing, doing the, the network maintenance uh, and so on. Okay. This is another uh, description from second generation to, to 2.5G and to 3G. Okay. So there are some, some changing in, especially in 3G, in the name of core network from the switching center uh, into a node P, node P, and so on. Okay, so uh, regarding the use of uh, frequency spectrum, spectrum frequency or, or frequency range being used uh, in the GSM standard, basically a uh, GSM standard uh, recommend, recommending uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, six spectrum fre frequency range to be used in, a, in the surface. For example, GSM 400 uh, uh, are recommended uh, to be used in a rural environment. Like there are one operator in, in Indonesia, Sampurna Telecommunication Indonesia, that use this frequency range to provide communication services in Lampung province, in some part of Sumatra and, and some other rural area. Uh, but mostly, Mostly GSM uh, recommending uh, this frequency called GSM 900 and GSM 1800 uh, as a worldwide uh, spectrum fre frequency for the GSM uh, coverage. And I think Indonesia, uh, I think, I don't know Malaysia, uh, situation in Malaysia, which frequency uh, being used in Malaysian for GSM based network. But Indonesia adopting these two kind of frequency along with GSM 400, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, that is the GSM 900 and GSM 1800 to provide nationwide uh, mobile communication uh, coverage. Dr. Mirtadi, I'm sorry for yeah. interrupting. Yeah. The time is two minutes left. Two minutes left? Yeah. Okay. I think <laughs> up to 12 o'clock. <laughs> No. Okay, let, let me speed it up. Speed uh, up. Sorry, um, sorry, uh, me, uh, Bu Novi. Yeah. Uh, we are supposed to finish at 12 30, right? Uh, in, yeah, actually, for this session, actually, for uh, two hours and a half, but maybe we can uh, spare it uh, like Pam study one hour and a half, and you may continue to get the uh, one hour. Um, Is it okay? Um, how it goes, uh, Dr. Miftadi? So as we plan, uh, so I'll yeah. handle yeah. on the assessment <laughs> part. So Dr. Mm -hmm. Miftadi uh, mm -hmm. will uh, will finish the lecture until mm -hmm. twelve fifteen, and okay. uh, I will cover for the rest of the hour for the assessment okay. part. Is All it okay, right. Dr. Novi? Yes, okay. Yeah, okay, okay. Thank you. Okay, so uh, Dr. Miftadi will continue the session yeah. until. Uh, 12, 11, 12, 15, 15 in Indonesia, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, 12, 15, 11, 15 yeah. Yeah, okay, thank uh, you. 11, 15 minutes 15. left, yeah. yeah. Okay. 15 yeah. minutes left, Dr. Mithadi. Okay. All right, thank you. So I still have about uh, how much, Bu? 15, 15 minutes? 15 yeah. minutes, yeah. Okay. Okay, try to make uh, most of it, yeah. Okay, uh, this is the spectrum frequency use. Uh, um. And this is the basic uh, uh, infrastructure of GSM, the old one. <clears throat> okay. But uh, why I am concerned to uh, give you some idea of the old uh, architecture of GSM, because this is as the benchmark, as the basis of evolution of other standards. So the next generation of uh, cellular communication system are actually based on this kind of network. So 
there is changing obviously, uh, but basically in terms of topology of the network, uh, there are no changes. Exactly like this one, except uh, the content and the feature uh, of the radio access network or the core network are uh, uh, changing. Okay. Then, uh, okay. This is uh, three, third generations. Uh, third generation technology uh, 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 on place in 2001 and providing a capacity up to two megabit per second. We can imagine two megabit per second per cell at the time is a huge compared with the previous one. But now with the four, with the LTE technology, a cell can have a, like a maximum of 300 megabit per second. So about 150 times of the third generations. So that's why the third generation can provide only a very limited uh, surfaces like you can see here, the bit rate is up to uh, 384 kilobit per second. If uh, the traffic is, uh, are low, but if the traffic are high, I think the, the access, uh, the data rate can be experienced by a user is much less than that. Okay. And okay, what kind of application in 3G? This is actually the foundation of the smartphone like we have now. Like at that time, uh, while it is very, very much uh, limited, uh, third generation can provide uh, internet surfing, online media, uh, can provide a very limited educational services. Telemetric, uh, obviously, because telemetric only requires a very, very less uh, speed. Uh, but the, the bird of financial services like online payment, credit card, telebanking, telebanking, not, not mobile banking yet, yeah, uh, has been emer emerged uh, uh, due to third generation uh, uh, mobile communications, special services and so on. So uh, I can say that uh, third generation at the beginning actually a giveaway for the bird of, of all kind of uh, services that you see now, like uh, financial services, application like games, uh, entertainment, video conference, uh, streaming uh, uh, services, um, uh, even like Netflix, uh, the 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 basic idea of the streaming service like a uh, video, like Netflix, uh, emerged around the birth of third generation. Okay, and this is the uh, more complete uh, component of of uh, GSM based uh, mobile communications, incorporating almost all kind of other network like telephony network, other access network, IP uh, or internet cloud we call it, and so on through a gateway services. So basically, what I want to mention is. Mobile communication network have compatibility to interworking with the, any kind of uh, telecommunication network, including telephony, old telephony, internet access, area net, local area network or ad hoc network, um, uh, satellite network, uh, and any kind of network. Okay, so uh, going a little bit about how. Uh, the access, what is the mechanism of the access uh, to the mobile communication? So there is a lot of kind of uh, multiple access. Multiple access means that if you want to access, if the users, number of users want to access uh, resources, a uh, channel in the telecommunication or in the pay station, how can it be done? Okay. So there are uh, several access schemes like uh, frequency division, multiple access. So every user being allocated a channel defined by a pen of frequency, that's called FDMA. Then uh, TDMA, time division, multiple access, uh, that actually the, the user access by a time slot, time divided into several time slot and each user allocated by a time slot or even by code. Call, uh, 
code division multiple access. Then uh, we have a modern multiple access scheme that actually a hybrid one between TDMA and FDMA or even between three kind of uh, this basic uh, uh, access, multiple access scheme. And the access called orthogonal frequency division and so on, actually modification of this uh, kind of uh, basic multiple access. Plus there are, uh, we call it a space, space division multiple access that being uh, uh, by using a, a smart antenna, for example. And this SDMA is, is uh, exists as a uh, start uh, to be considered to, uh, in application from uh, long-term evolution on, on from 4G. Okay. Uh, this is just uh, more explanation about CDMA. Okay. Frequency reuse and okay. One thing, uh, the beauty of mobile communication is actually what we call frequency reuse. That is uh, actually explain why the mobile communication is so much popular than other kind of communications. As I mentioned before, nowadays the subscriber of mobile communication worldwide are exceeding 5 billion. 5 billion out of 6 billion something uh, world population, penduduk dunia. So it is a very huge number. Why? Uh, while the bandwidth allocated for uh, mobile communication is actually not that huge, only about 60 megahertz in the 3G and 4G a little bit uh, more than that, around 100 megahertz, but it can support, it can cater uh, uh, more than 5 billion people worldwide. By what? By what we can see here, we call it a uh, frequency reuse. How the frequency can be reused? By doing or designing the coverage like a uh, beehive. That's why we call it a cellular because it considered like a cell. So every coverage device by radio base station are allocated a certain bandwidth of frequency by, for example, adopting a certain pattern of clustering system. Like, okay, if we have like a 24 megahertz or 21 megahertz uh, bandwidth uh, from government, then we can divide it into seven, allocate it into a seven cell. Then this pattern, we can repeat in every other coverage uh, long enough or uh, um, far enough from the original cell which use the same channel, okay? So that's why we call it a frequency reuse uh, equal to seven or a pattern of several cell. By doing so, we can actually uh, develop or deploy the network by using this seven cluster system in every part of the countries, every part of the world. Then the total capacity of the bandwidth can be multiplied by a thousand, ten thousand, or even a million and so on, creating a huge capacity uh, for the whole network in a country or in, in worldwide. That's why even we only have a small, very small bandwidth of frequency uh, to be used for this cellular network, but by this scheme, that capacity can be repeated a thousand or even millions time, then eventually we can have millions and millions time capacity that can serve more than 5 billion uh, people worldwide. Okay, and uh, this is the kind of uh, radio access mode uh, uh, for the th th uh, three, uh, third generation, which use a white pin CDMA. So basically, because in CDMA, every user using the same frequency spectrum and same time accessing the, at the same time, so the channelization is actually done by the code. So for example, uh, Hanif using a channel number one defined by the code one. Me using a 
channel number two divided by uh, defining by the uh, uh, divide by uh, the code number two. Uros using a channel number three, for example, divided by uh, code number uh, code number code three, for example. So even we use the uh, same frequency and accessing at the same time, uh, we can have a or we still can have a orthogonal channel that channel that can not interfere in each other because the code is or uh, is orthogonal. Okay. And this is the orthogonal code implementation in the network. Okay. Um, this is uh, explain how much the data rate can be achieved here by a certain wireless technology from GSM to LTE, then to 5G. Okay, still eleven. Then uh, just a little bit focus on LTE. Uh, in most part of the country, like Indonesia, the deployment of five uh, G is only li limited in a certain big cities like Bandung, Jakarta, uh, Surabaya, Medan, and so on. But I think uh, the net the five G network are very much limited uh, uh, in a in a uh, small smaller city. Yeah smaller city or even in a rural area uh, still uh, using a 4G technology. And with that 4G technology, uh, like a LTE, this is kind of uh, services that can be provided, can be uh, provided to the customers like uh, high definition video streaming, video uh, blogging, for example, up to uh, 6 to 8 megabit per second, downlink or uplink 2 megabit per second. Okay. Um, online gaming, point to point connection by using the LTE. But again, uh, 5G uh, uh, will uh, providing a better uh, quality, obviously, because uh, the capacity is much higher than uh, 4G. Um, I still don't have slide uh, with showing the 5G uh, capability in providing a certain services here. Okay, this is the LTE. Um, okay, just uh, uh, in two minutes, I would like to um, conclude uh, that Mobile communications uh, or wireless communication uh, have been contributing to the development of mankind in less than 30 years, but have a huge impact in terms of communication, in terms of connection between people to people worldwide, and also in terms of economy. Like uh, we have seen uh, before that the impact of satellite, uh, mobile communication, telemedicine is exceeding uh, uh, exceeding around six billion, six trillion US dollar worldwide. That means more than five percent, or or around six percent of a global economic output actually contributed by uh, this wireless communication, and employ more than I think more than thirty million people worldwide. So, if you see that figure, it means that. Uh, the economic output is so powerful, so high, but the employment is just a fraction of the uh, global population, only about involving about 30 million. So it means that the productivity of economic activities in the wireless communication is so, so high. The productivity is so high. And that means also the impact to increase the productivity of a nation economically is so important. That's why uh, every countries like Indonesia and Malaysia are very keen in uh, how to develop a much more uh, widely available uh, and better quality, better capacity for uh, wireless communication access. And okay, I think exactly yeah. at 11.15. Yes. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, uh, saya kembalikan ke Bu Novi.
Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Mifadi, for the truthful uh, material. So now we will continue the session to uh, Ms. Roziani. Ms. Rozi, are you there? Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much, um, okay. uh, Bunovi and Dr. Miftadi. Uh, okay. okay, so as we mentioned just now, so I'll be taking over on the uh, assessment part. So, uh, 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 Bu Novi, actually, I have sent the link uh, for the assessment, okay? Oh, so, okay. Uh, based on the... Uh, everyone can see the link? Allow me to share, Dr. Dr. Novi, Bu Novi? Yeah. yeah. Can, can, you, yeah. Can, can every student uh, access the link? Okay. Students? Uh, okay. So, basically, uh, based on the lecture that delivered by Dr. Miftadi just now, um. Um, I have created assessment, uh, 15 questions based on the lecture. So I hope everyone can try. Uh, and I give you 10 minutes uh, to answer the questions. Uh, simple answer. Um, and uh, after the uh, everyone completed, uh, so the, the last five minutes, we will discuss the answer. Okay. So I hope everyone can access the link. Students, is there anyone who cannot access the link? Maybe you can raise your hand. And the link on uh, the, the, the quiz only can be answered once. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. So you only get one uh, chance. chance. Yeah. Yes. To, yes. To answer the quiz. So it's please okay. Be it's careful. very simple questions just to mm -hmm. check the understanding of uh, what uh, Dr. Miftadi has delivered just now. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So by uh, 12.25, uh, inshallah, we will discuss the answer. Okay. Okay, thank you. 11.25, students, your uh, time for uh, completing the quiz.
Okay, one minute left. Okay. Uh, are we done? Can we start discussing? <laughs> Alhamdulillah, based on the... Uh, Bu Novi, can I share my screen? Yes. Okay. Yes, you may. You can Okay, so um, uh, this is the result. Uh, seventy one out of I think one one seven participants. Okay, I think uh they respond quite good. Okay, based on the result here, um, allow me to discuss uh the answer. Okay, so uh, uh based on the score. Okay, we can see uh, in the range of 6 to 15. So, average student, uh, mostly uh, uh, 17 students get seven, um, 10 marks over 15 marks. The total marks for this question is uh, 15. So, uh, 17 managed to get uh, 10 over 15 Um. Okay, a uh, three, uh, fifteen over fifteen. Uh, I think Doctor Miftadi delivered very well class just now. <laughs> okay, let me discuss class uh, on the the answer. Okay, the first question: Wireless communication between side A and side B tower is called point to point point to point uh, connection. So um, sixty four of you uh say um, false. Yes. Uh, in the slide uh, prepared by Dr. Miftadi, uh, communication between side A and side B is point-to-point -point communication. Okay. So for the second question, which of the following is not the benefits of using wireless communication? So the, the most accurate answer here is uh, more secure. Compared to wired, uh, wireless has less secure uh, 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 in terms of the communication. Okay, so 60% answered correct okay in a point to point connection one transmitter can transmit to multiple direction dr miftadi emphasized many times during his lecture just now so uh, hopefully everyone get the point for point to multi point is dedicated uh, connecting from one source to multiple sources it is applied when actually for example we have one base station connecting to multiple base station okay so that is the application of point to multi point connection okay so next question is OFDM is the modulation technique used for wireless local area network? Yes, the answer is true. OFDM is used for um, uh, starting from wireless standards AO2.11, uh, AG, N, AO2.11, AC, AO2.11, AX, and the latest one, uh, and, the, and the soon, soon coming soon is AO2, uh, AO2, uh, Wi-Fi 7. Okay, so it's using OFDM, but in OF, in Wi-Fi um, 6 and above, uh, they has improved the modulation technique to use 
OFTMA. So that is the improvement that has been done for wireless um, local area network. Okay, which of the following is example of point to point wireless communication? The example is telephone. Okay, radio is not point to point, and fax also is not point to point. Okay, seven two seven two uh, students has answered correct. Okay. Which of the following is the possible issue raised caused by internet over satellite communication? This one also has been emphasized by Dr. Miftadi. Dr. Miftadi mentioned on uh, Starlink. So the biggest issues of uh, launching the Starlink is on the security. Okay, so I hope uh, 53 uh, answered. Um, Okay, uh, maybe uh, yeah, cost also is a uh, issue is another issue, but the most important is on the security issue. Okay, the next question is the organization responsible for many matters related to information and communication technology based at in United States is called ITU. This also uh emphasized by Dr. Miftadi during his lecture just now. Okay, the orbit of geostationary satellite is fully utilized by operating system. 73 students correct answer correctly. Okay, which of the following is the example of satellite application used for healthcare? So the answer is VSAT. The band technology can be used to measure, um, to measure this thing except soil moisture because uh, maybe uh, Dr. Miftadi uh, in the slide also mentioned and I, I hope uh, all students since the slide numbers is 72 lots number of sites uh, Dr. Miftadi don't get enough time to explain, explain everything so we hope that all students can do your own study uh, to have a detailed study on the uh, wireless communication concept. So band actually is body area network. So uh, definitely soil is not covered under body. Okay, so that's why the answer is uh, soil moisture. Okay, wireless band can reduce government burden in solving health issues, especially involving aging population. Yes, okay, so the answer is true. Okay, so uh, if you can recall how... um. Um, the band technology can solve um, sending the sen uh, sensor detecting the health condition for the remote areas. Okay, so Wi-Fi transmit more than half of user traffic and widely, uh, widely used in world worldwide in connecting to the internet. Okay, so the answer is true. Okay, which of the following wireless communication technology focus on connecting people and things? Okay, that the answer is 5G. Also stated in Dr. Miftadi's slide, where in the slide uh, is uh, separate between 3G, 4G, and the right side is really emphasized on the FG, uh, 5G, uh, the importance of 5G, where the technology connecting between the people and things. Okay. The benefits of uh the benefit sorry of uh, this type of him the benefit of smart city is possible to be achieved using uh 5G okay because 5G is catering or uh, um, focusing on connecting between things and people so in smart city all those um, you know, elements are connected together so by having 5G it is possible to achieve the benefits of uh 5G uh, uh, smart city. Which of the following uh, can happen when the wireless user located at that area between two wireless area? So they will lose connection to the network. Okay. Um, I think that's all. Uh, the question 92 students responded uh, to the question. Um, and we can see the graph. Uh, not bad, doctor. Um, the student managed to answer the question very well because uh, I'm preparing the question. Uh, right after you deliver the slide, every time you deliver the slide, so I try to um, generate questions based on uh, your delivery. So I think the, uh, students uh, focus uh, on what uh, you delivered and Alhamdulillah, I think the result uh, not bad. Lah, doctor. Congratulations to everyone. Okay, I think that's all from me. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Bunovi, Dr. Okay. Mithi, and students. Yeah. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Rosie, for leading the or discussing the quiz. 
So students, do you have a question regarding our topic today? Maybe you can ask directly to our speaker, Dr. Miftadi, as well as to uh, Ms. Roziani. Or if you are shy, maybe you can uh, type your question in the chat box and then we can follow up your question. Or everything is clear? Hello, students. So if you think that all materials are clear, maybe you can give us reaction, thumbs up, or love, maybe all. Oh. So we can know that you are still uh, here with us. Okay, okay. All right, so everything is clear, yeah? Okay, so there's no question then. Okay, I think the material is clear enough, Dr. Mistadi um, and Ms. Oziadi. I think we can end this session actually. Or do you want to add some? Uh, thank you very much. As I would like to thank to Puros uh, and student of Telkom University and, and University of Kuala Lumpur. Mm -hmm. uh, then also I would like to thank to Punofi, Bu uh, Indah, dan uh, Tim yeah, uh, mm -hmm. for your effort yeah, to make this course possible. Thank you. Okay. All right. Okay, everyone, uh, thank you so much. This has been an interesting session, which I believe it will enrich our knowledge and understanding on the topic today. So before we end the session, please turn on your camera, everyone. We will have a photo session together. Okay. All right, let me check. Okay. Okay, Nadia. Hello, Nadia. Can you please open your camera, Nadia? Ananda, okay. All right. We can capture our moment for today. So I'll count until three. Put your best smile. One, two, three. All right, next, uh, we can have a freestyle maybe. One, two, three. Yes. All right, Ma one more time, one more time. <laughs> one, two, three. Okay, thank you very much. And I'll share the feedback link in the chat. So please fill out the feedback link as the proof of your attendance as well as uh, for the requirement to earn a certificate. So don't forget to fill out the feedback link. Okay, so Dr. Miftadi and Dr. Roziani, thank you very much for sharing the session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bu thank you Nobi, thank you, Bu Inda. Okay. Thank you to all. And one more time, I will share the uh, attendance link as well from the electrical engineering so students can uh, fill out the attendance list. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a moment. Okay. So I share the feedback link as well as attendance list. Yeah. So please fill out those two links to as a proof of your attendance and as well as to earn a certificate. So please check the chat. You can find out the uh, feedback link as well as the attendance list. Okay, Dr. Piftadi and Dr. Rosi, if you have another agenda, you may leave this to meeting. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing your valuable materials. Yeah. Thank, you so Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Assalamualaikum. Pak Doni, Good day. terima kasih juga sudah hadir, Pak Doni. <laughs> terima kasih, Bu Nobi. Yeah. Okay.